Kevin Drum, the president of Broom, SUNY Broom, uh, we hear you're leaving next year. Don't I have to sign off on that? Yeah, I, I'm not sure I okayed that, but uh, you know, and also, you know, just a great place for people to get that start, to get that uh, love of education, but also the workforce training that goes on to uh, get people into the jobs for the next generation. So thank you all for being such great partners here. And here we are back in the Southern Tier. Good to be here again. I always love coming here. There's so many things that make this uh, so special. And uh, I brag about it. I brag about the breathtaking scenery, uh, the fact that we're not far from a, an extraordinary museum down the road, Mas you know, NASCAR. We have Glass Museum. We have all the stories of Mark Twain, for those of you who are Mark Twain fans and go to the wineries. So uh, yeah, I come here. You know, I travel the whole state, but I have spent an enormous amount of time here. And it's uh, it's a real gem, and I don't want it to be a hidden gem any longer, uh, so that's why I talk about it so often and encourage people to come here. But this is actually uh, happy to be in an airport. I was at a little bit bigger one a couple days ago making a major announcement of a brand-new terminal. It'll be the largest terminal in America at uh, JFK. So those of you who will be also uh, maybe taking a, a plane from here down to JFK at some point, uh, you'll see the new Terminal 1 is going to be there as well. But yeah, I don't want to just have all this excitement and pride around the, the downstate airports. We're doing a lot there because I want to make sure we never overlook how important the upstate airports are as the, uh, the, the doormat, the, the welcome home and also uh, the first impression that many of the visitors have. So you know, when I'm downstate, I see all the I Love New York posters that promote upstate, but also we need to have the airports uh, first class up here as well. So, so let's talk about that. I was uh, reflecting on a description of this airport, and I thought this was very diplomatic, whoever wrote this. Uh, I'm going to repeat this because I was very impressed with this. The existing airport is an aging mid-century facility um, with a prestigious history, but faded and piecemeal identity. Who wrote that? <laughs> that, that? That is brilliant. The stark exterior canopy and building entries no longer reflect the excitement and luxury of air travel and don't relate to the airport's captivating hilltop location. I mean, is there a poet out there who wrote this as a uh, captivating hilltop location? Historical expansions have boxed in the terminal's interior space, resulting in the dark, constricted feeling passenger experience, which I just felt when I walked in over there. Uh, but the project that we're going to be talking about is a uh, proposed terminal renovations develop a fresh and high quality passenger experience for both the general and commercial aviation unified under a strong site inspired identity. So that's what we're striving for and I know how important it is to this community because you know as an upstater I know what this area felt like you know for 40 years uh, we were in decline. Our great legacy industries left. Our young people were our greatest export. All my siblings growing up down the road in Buffalo, they all left in search of better jobs because there were none. And I'm so proud that those days are in the past, and especially in Broome County and Binghamton, we've seen the, the transformation where people want to be here. They want to be here, part of this energy, the affordable cost of living, but the great jobs that we've been able to attract here. So we've been here to open new welcome centers and the the, uh, the clean energy competition, I come every year, Harvey, I, I know that's a, a time of like the, it's the Oscars, you're announcing the winners who are going to be creating jobs right here and innovating the ener clean energy future. And uh, I know that I know there's so many other areas where we can do better, but there's great news. I mean, just what happened, I wish I could have been there, but the White House announced it, uh, the $114 million uh, to create Battery New York. I am so excited about this. You know, I've been here many times. I brag about our Nobel Prize winners, and I always say to everybody, as I've toured your facilities many times, like, you know, they're so brilliant about batteries. Why does it take, why do I have to keep recharging my cell phone so often? I mean, if you could just work on the basic things, like, I don't want to have to keep charging my cell phone, but I think about, you know, I'm out on a boat, and why can't we have battery-operated boats? And so there's so many ideas, and it's happening right here, and I hope you understand, you know, that don't take this for granted. This could be anywhere in the nation and it's happening right here at Binghamton University. So, you know, cutting edge research development to create the next generation of batteries. So the point being is that as we do projects like this, we support our businesses, our major businesses like, like Lockheed Martin and uh, Raymond Corporation and we have Dick Sporting Goods. We have so many great businesses here. Having good transportation, a good airport and more flights which will come when you reno do these renovations, is also a good economic development strategy. You know, as people are trying to attract higher caliber employees from other parts of the country, or trying to bring their customers to see their product on site. So, so that's why this is uh, a multi-purposed uh, 
uh, it's expansion here because it's going to address so many needs. I mean, we talk about what we did at the uh, you know, trying to attract more people into the nursing school. My God, we need more people in nursing. Uh, if you know anybody who wants to be a nurse, we have a, a thousand scholarships. We're paying the full ride for nurses, and we've investing in affordable housing here. You know, something Don and I have talked about a lot. Uh, Thirty-four apartment unit on uh, Union and what we're doing in Endicott with the school there. So I, I just want to tell you we're addressing all these areas, you know, stimulating the economy, affordable housing, clean energy initiatives, but airports are so important to us. And as we mentioned, airports leave a lasting impression. It's the first impression, it's the lasting impression. So why not make it even better? So that's why I'm proud to announce that we are investing $230 million in upstate airports. Uh, that's exciting. <laughs> It's part of our upstate revitalization project. The grants are extraordinary. They're going to be going to Albany, Watertown, Saratoga, Syracuse, Sullivan County, Ogdensburg, Chester, Adirondack, and of course the Greater Binghamton Airport. And last year you know, we put out the bids for this, and we wanted to, you know, and have enhancements, not just security screening, but terminal expansion, rehabilitation. Uh, disinfecting measures because you never know what's going to happen again and just creating a whole cleaner brighter experience for the customers and so we're continuing to do that and what we're doing is also talking about the people who work here every single day and those people who showed up during the pandemic and had to come in during extraordinary circumstances you know the airline workers the baggage handlers the maintenance staff uh, we always honor, honor them but they also deserve deserve a work environment that is uplifting as well so let's give them some credit as well so here's what we're talking about let's talk about what's coming to Binghamton with a 32 million dollar award so that is what we're here, proud to announce here today curbside porters and look at that departure lounge who's going to want to depart from that lounge they're going to want to stay there all day that's that's gorgeous and so uh this this is what this community deserves and i really believe that uh that they deserve something absolutely spectacular uh, new departures lounge you can wait relax you can you know since we're known as the city of carousels let's have brand new baggage carousels to uh it's going to look great as well so i'm very excited about this these projects we're going to have also you you know that we have a new airline uh, is it avalo avello avello okay we've got to get it right everyone messes up my last name so i have avello i want to get it right uh they're going to have non-stop flights to florida uh okay now we want you to stay this is just for a weekend this is just for a a short little visit but uh you know this is gonna be great and i think this is just the beginning i really believe that you know you have a uh, an airline like that that sees the possibilities that the people here you know, need a little break once in a while and get down to Florida, but I think that's going to be a catalyst for other airlines and others to say, yes, let's get back to where the energy is, where the excitement is, and the customers are. So, so when I say infrastructure is a, I've said all along, it's a quality of life issue. You know, we connect communities. This is one way, this is a manifestation of just that, connecting people to jobs and recreation and their families. And so we're excited about this. I'm looking forward to a uh, uh, I'm very good at, everyone knows, you've seen me a lot for eight years coming here with, with a shovel in my hand for groundbreakings and a scissors for the ribbon cutting, but we're going to continue investing in the southern tier. This is a community that matters. It has a great history, but also an even brighter future, so we're going to get these done. And so the southern tier, I will say again, is truly soaring, and it starts with great projects like this today. So to put an exclamation point on that, uh, let's hear from our county executive, Jason Gardner, to get reflections on what this is all about for the community. Thank you.